50 cent, too short. All of them talk about Glock 40. Okay, I'm the only one in this room professional enough that I know of to carry this Glock 40. I'm the only one. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in today. When we out in the street, the Glock 40 is what we have to protect ourselves. Never leave home without your Glock 40. I'm sure a whole lot of people just clicked off the video at this point, but those of you that are still here, welcome back. Today we're going over the Glock 40 MOS, of course. Uh, for years, it's a play on uh, urban slang. A lot of folks saying they carry their Glock 40. Well, that was a joke because there was no Glock 40 for years, but alas, Glock has actually made a Model 40, and that's what we have here. This is the MOS version, which is uh, milled out for the uh, optical sights, as the name indicates. So uh, what we're going to do is uh, step outside, do a little bit of shooting with it. This sucker is chambered in 10 millimeter, and 10 millimeter still to this day is sort of an exotic cartridge, if you will, to a certain extent. It does have a lot of mainstream following, and you can get it just about anywhere. But um, a lot of folks are still intimidated by it. Is it too powerful? Um, what can you do with it? Can you hunt with it? Um, how accurate is it? So what we're going to do is step outside, test a few loads in the chronograph, put a, uh, some rounds on paper, and see what kind of accuracy we can get with this combo. And then after that, we're going to come back inside, take a look at the gun itself, the optic that we have on here, which is the Trigicon RMR that was sent to us by uh, Optics Planet for this review, so we certainly appreciate that. Uh, we're going to get into that a little bit. The combination overall um, and then sort of just what I think of the gun at the end so that's what's coming up next guys Without question, one of the reasons that people buy the big 10 millimeter, particularly in the long slide version here, is to get the added velocity out of the barrel. So what we're going to do is put a few different loads through this one. They're all 180 grain, and if you look down at the chronograph there, we're basically going to go on the bottom and just go up. So the first rounds up should be the American Eagle, full metal jacket, 180 grain stuff. Uh, after that, we'll do the Freedom Munitions, uh, XTP round, 180 grain again, and then the uh, Federal sort of hunting stuff that we got down there. I expect that one to be the sort of the fastest, but you never know until you try it. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're at a distance of about 15 feet. All right, there you go. That's the American Eagle again. And next up there, yep, the Freedom, XTP bullet. A little bit slower there, still moving. And then lastly, the uh, Federal. We'll see if my prediction was correct. <laughs> Yep, it was. I didn't do that ahead of time. Tell you what, it lets you know that you are shooting 10 millimeter. Now we're gonna check the accuracy of the gun. Now one thing I've pointed out in uh, several other 10 millimeter Glock videos is that the factory barrels weren't that accurate. However, uh, one thing I'll say is that shooting this gun, uh, just in the past few months, I've noticed it seems to be more accurate. I don't know if that's due to tighter manufacturing tolerances or just the longer barrel, or if it's just a one-off, I don't know. But it seems to have pretty good accuracy. So we're gonna run the same loads through it. Target down range at 25 yards. And uh, of course we have the rest here, it's the CTK Precision Rest, and uh, of course the RMR. So actually, let me wipe that clean real quick because it's got some gunk and stuff on it that we're just gonna try to avoid for precision shooting. And uh, see what kind of results we get. I know a lot of hunters like to use the aftermarket barrels and like I said, I sort of understand that because historically they've been sort of necessary for good accuracy, but 
we'll see what we can do. First up there, if I actually could load the gun correctly, will be American uh, Eagle. That's 100% user error, not gun error. All right. group from here looks pretty good actually again like I said I've gotten pretty good accuracy at this point I'll move over to the free ammunition stuff XTP bullets tend to be very accurate <laughs> you never know I shouldn't shouldn't talk before I shoot right Well, that group from here, anyway, looks a little bit bigger, but still very good. Pistol group, not bad at all. Now, we're gonna go for the uh, big boy here. The uh, 180 grain trophy bonded. Let's see what we can do. This one's gonna wake me up. You don't need coffee when you have this stuff. I'm gonna do my best to avoid, <laughs> avoid flinching on you. I should also note that uh, this trigger is just a stock factory trigger. So all I do is polish the internals like I do on everything. Every Glock I own, I should say. And uh, other than that, bone stock. The reason you're seeing the gun recoil so much in my hand isn't so much the recoil around, just to let you know. What I'm trying to do is relax my hands so that I don't put any sort of input on the gun and flinch consciously trying to avoid it so sort of lip wristing it if you will to a degree anyway let's go check it out well I mentioned it was more accurate than most of my other 10 millimeter Glocks and without question we, uh, we showed that here so first group looks like to be the best group of the bunch and that's just insanity at 25 yards with a factory gun. We're shooting one and a quarter inch groups with the American Eagle 180 grain stuff. With the uh, Federal XTP bullet, we're at one and 7.5 inches. And, and then exactly the same with the uh, trophy bonded. So uh, for me, with a stock gun, if I'm shooting at 25 yards and getting anything really three inches or under, but especially two inches and under, I'm going to consider that pretty accurate. Uh, certainly the RMR combo helps here, um, but I mean, that's that, that's a very accurate gun, particularly for a Glock. I'm pleasantly surprised by that. Uh, didn't expect it when I first purchased the gun, but since shooting it, I've noticed that it does, it does seem to print pretty well, but that's about it. We'll uh, step inside and take a look at the details. Through the magic of video, it is the next day, so before we go inside, I actually want to shoot some uh, distance here. Those groups kind of got me cocky, and uh, we're going to see what we can do. We got a uh, target down range. I believe that's the 12 by 20 shootsteelcom target. That target is at 150 meters right now. So 150 meters with the uh, American Eagle round that was the most accurate in our testing, so we're going to see what we can do. Uh, in terms of ballistics that I should just be able to hold on the head and hit it. Uh, that's, of course, if I'm doing my part, which is the big variable in this uh, equation. So, uh, we're going to see what we can do. Here we go. Well, are we getting cocky? I did shoot this ahead of time, so I didn't. This is a surprise to me as it is to you. Uh, there you go, back to reality. Typically, I'm shooting this out here with rifles at this distance, and uh, a time of flight difference is just crazy. I mean, it feels like you gotta wait forever to hear the signature. Yeah, start to suck. 
There we go. Back on it. go that was probably what 12 or 13 rounds it wasn't quite a full mag uh, that we had left over from the last range session but I mean I'm impressed guys uh, no getting around it uh, Glocks do not have a reputation for, for great accuracy with their factory barrels but so far I've been very very impressed with this uh, as we've already mentioned a few times before going into too many details here on the 40, we'll compare it here to the Glock 20, which of course was the previous full-size 10 millimeter pistol. So uh, actually the weights are almost identical. We'll show you why that here is in just a second, but the uh, Glock 40 MOS is gonna come in at 28 ounces when it's unloaded and when it's fully loaded, so 15 rounds, uh, you're gonna come in right at 40 ounces. So it is no lightweight. However, the Glock 20 is almost identical. Uh, so it's just, it's not more than an ounce off in each uh, category. So the big difference there is what you're gonna see here, which is the slide. So the slide there on the 40 MOS is gonna be a little bit thinner. It's hard to see, but it is there. And the milling is actually a little bit different there. When we take it apart, we'll actually show you that it's milled a little bit different on the inside. So the actual mass of the slides is pretty much identical. So that's how Glock did it. Uh, and they were able to keep the same springs and all that stuff because the timing of the pistol uh, as it's operating is virtually identical due to the weight being virtually identical. We're gonna go over some of the details of the pistol and we're just gonna pretend that uh, folks watching this have never shot a Glock. I realize this is a unique pistol and I think it's gonna bring some new Glock shooters to the table. So uh, the slide itself has a melanite finish of course Glock used to use a tenifer finish and now they call it nitride or melanite either way it's gonna give you good surface hardness and uh, corrosion resistant uh, some folks say it's not as good as the earlier ones uh, what I found uh, in a number of new Glocks is that some of them are very good and some of them are very bad so it seems like the quality control on the uh, Glock finishes has gone downhill in the last couple of years this particular one is very good and I actually have a uh, gen 4 Glock 19 that's 2016 produced as well very good. And then I believe I have a 17 that's 2015 produced and not so good at all. So um, it really seems to vary by pistol, pistol to pistol. So unfortunately, that's what it is. Uh, underneath on the frame here, we do have the single Glock rail for adding any sort of accessories that you guys have seen throughout the review there. Um, and uh, one of the things about sights, the sights that the pistol comes with uh, stink. I've said that before about Glock sights. They're just not that good. And they, in my opinion, are sort of placeholders. Yes, they work. Um, but I don't like the sight picture of them personally. And they're polymer. And I've seen a few of them break over the years. So I always recommend uh, upgrading the sights on any Glock pistol. This one, of course, has the Trigicon, sight, Trigicon sights, I should say, that came from Optics Planet. Um, they're not cheap. Uh, they're suppressor height but they are very high quality sights. Uh, one thing I like about these versus some of the other options out there on the market is that your front sight has that white stripe around it. And then the rear sight, they don't have any of that. It just has the tritium vials in there. So that's good. Uh, Excluding the use of a red dot, it's going to really draw your eye into that front sight. Uh, of course, with the red dot, you do get a co-witness capability with this RMR that we have here. And uh, one thing I found, and I know I got a ton of questions about this, was low light shooting and sort of how that would work uh, with uh, basically four dots, right? So you have the one dot from the RMR, and then you have the three dots from the sights. And low light conditionings, uh, would it be confusing? Uh, here's, I guess, my take on it. I could see how it could be. Um, that seems to be a valid concern. However, the colors are all different. Of course, the night sights here are all going to go green, and your optic is going to be red. So... For me, I didn't notice it'd be a problem, but I wasn't shooting under stress. No one was shooting back at me. Um, so it may be, in my experience so far, it hasn't been. The Glock 40, as well as all the other MLS pistols from Glock, comes with these different mounting plates that come off. You can see it there on the slide, how it's different. And that's what you actually mount your optic to. And then you mount that down to the frame or the correction to the slide of the pistol. So uh, one of the big problems Glock has uh, is that they really didn't think this through. The RMR is the most used red dot, at least in America right now, by far and away. Uh, of course, there are others, but this one's definitely the most popular. And in order to use it on your Glock pistols with the screws that are provided and everything that comes in Glock's kit, you have to get this little uh, plate that goes underneath. I'm not sure if you guys can see it there, but it's right underneath there. And uh, if not, you can make it work, but I don't recommend it. Uh, Trigicon actually sells this kit to work with the Glock pistols, but it's kind of a 
it shouldn't you shouldn't need it but you do unfortunately so just keep that in mind when you're uh, looking at one of these pistols if you plan to use the rmr with it. the controls of the pistol are pretty simple we have our trigger here it does have a trigger safety which is this little piece right here in order to press the trigger to the rear that has to be depressed so it's really a drop safety as well as a trigger safety it does have another drop safety we'll show you here in a second this is our slide lock or slide release depending on how you look at it glock looks at it as a slide lock i should say uh, we do have our magazine release on the gen 4 pistols it's going to be a little bit bigger than the gen 3s it's also reversible so for those of you lefties out there you can put it on the other side of the gun uh, the frame size on the Gen 4s, one thing that a lot of people like about them is that they're actually a little bit smaller in circumference than the, circumference rather, than the Gen 3s. Um, that said, it does come with uh, different back straps. So two of them will have the beaver tail, medium and large, and uh, two of them will not have it. I've found uh, I do have very large hands or relatively large hands that I prefer the uh, medium back strap with the beaver tail. It just lets you get really high on the pistol, consistent grip, and uh, I like the circumference of it again because I have large hands. However, I'm guessing probably 80 to 90% of shooters out there are just going to leave it with the base grip and not put any of the uh, added dimension size ones on there. So uh, that's just a guess, but that's what I expect. Uh, the grip pattern and texture on the Gen 4 pistols is pretty good. Um, in my opinion, it's an improvement over the Gen 3s. It has the little uh, sort of polymer pieces that stick up and they do give you some grip, uh, both regular shooting on you know a normal day as well as if your hands get sweaty, bloody, whatever the case may be, it definitely gives you a little bit of added texture without rubbing you if you're gonna carry it inside the waistband. So sort of a good compromise between the standard Gen 3 and the RTF2 frames that some folks felt were a little bit too aggressive. Disassembling the pistol is pretty standard stuff. Uh, it's like any other Glock, but again, we have to assume that not everybody watching this video is familiar with Glocks. So what we want to do first is uh, lock our slide back. You can push up here on the slide block and uh, inspect the chamber. You want to look for an empty chamber, of course. If you need to feel, go ahead and do that. No magazine in the pistol, so we're clear. At this point, we're going to let the slide go home and uh, point in a safe direction, pull the trigger. And while we're disassembling it, or before I disassemble it, I should say, to talk about the trigger. Um, the, this is the standard Glock trigger that comes with it. Some of these will come with a minus connector. Uh, mine did as well, and that's going to give you a little bit lighter trigger pull. I put standard connectors in all my Glocks. I just, I'm so used to that trigger pull that that's simply how I do it. But trigger pull on this is going to be uh, right around five pounds, five to five and a half pounds. You're going to have some slack and take up in there, and then you're going to hit a wall, a little bit of mush and all the way through to the break. At this point, we have a real good reset. Locks are known for their resets, they have very good resets. Um, but the break, in terms of like a target gun, um, certainly leaves a little bit to be desired, but as you guys saw earlier in the video, it's certainly capable of getting hits at distance. Uh, really, this one in particular seems to shoot really well. So uh, the trigger for a lot of people is uh, not gonna be like a match grade trigger, it's something that they don't like. However, I shoot Glocks more than any other pistols, and I'm really used to it at this point. So if you practice enough, you can get there too, I'm, I'm sure. So we're going to pull our slide back about an eighth of an inch, pull down on these two tabs to disassemble, let our slide go forward. Then we're going to take out our recoil spring, and it should be no noted the uh, Gen 4 Glocks have the dual recoil spring. It's something a lot of people like as sort of an upgrade. And you can see, if you look in the slide, it's very sort of milled out. And if you look at like a, a Glock 20, there'll be added material in there, particularly essentially right up here, there's a little bit more and a little bit more here on the sides. So uh, that's gonna add to the, the added weight that like we talked about earlier to make it uh, very similar all the way around. Uh, the barrel here is a cold hammer forged barrel, which is certainly something that a lot of people like. Glocks are known for having really good barrel life. Uh, they don't really shoot out too often. You'd have to put a lot of rounds through them to do that. and. Uh, Really simple browning locking design, and I know one thing that people were always sort of concerned with with the uh, Glocks, particularly in 10 millimeter and 40 caliber, but 10 millimeter in particular, was the uh, chamber support. Gen 4 Glocks, I've not heard of a single issue with chamber support. You can see here, uh, this one has no issues with it as well, so it seems to have rectified that problem uh, the Glocks have anyway. So moving back, you can see this is actually our striker right here. And that's an additional striker drop safety, again, just preventing the pistol from firing. Uh, so people say Glocks don't have safeties. That's absolutely not true. They have multiple safeties, uh, the trigger safety, this one. And so there's definitely safeties on the box. And to get it all the way back on, I'm just going to slide it back, let it go home, test fire it, hold the trigger back, 
ensure function, and that's it. That's why Glocks are uh, one of many reasons why people love them. They're very simple to maintain. Now we'll get into this little beauty right here. This is the Trigicon RMR RM01 model. This one has the nickel boron finish on there. Uh, why the finish, some of you may ask. Number one, I think it looks cool, and that's important, right? Uh, it's cool to have guns that you like that look cool or aesthetically appealing. Uh, of course, the nickel boron finish is also going to give you a little bit more corrosion resistant over the standard anodizing. And I think this gun in particular, the uh, 40 MOS, is very likely to be used as a hunting gun. So uh, the little bit of extra corrosion resistance, I think really kind of works well with this package here. So it has a 3.25 MOA dot. So what that means for new folks is that you're gonna, your dot will cover up approximately three and a quarter inches at 100 yards. So what I found in my shooting uh, with red dots over the years uh, is that I tend to prefer a dot on a pistol that's somewhere between three and seven MOA. I have some bigger ones, I actually have a 13 MOA one. I actually also have a RMR that has a one MOA dot. And uh, three to seven seems to kind of be the sweet spot. Uh, for most standard front sights, your front sight is gonna be the equivalent uh, in terms of width of about a six MOA dot. If that gives you sort of a frame of reference for some folks out there. Uh, RMR is very durable, very proven optic. You can see very thick all the way around in case of drops. Uh, people who watch the channel here know that I have broken some micro dots before in the past. I've never broken an RMR. I have uh, heard of them going down, but I've never personally done it. So I have a little bit of confidence in them for sure. Uh, windage for zeroing it is right here on the side. Each click is going to be one MOA. It has a very positive click adjustment when you go through it with a screwdriver. So uh, you're going to be moving it approximately one inch at every 100 yards. Um, so that's certainly good. And uh, the elevation is right here on the top of my camera. will actually focus on there. Same thing. Each click is going to correspond to one MOA or approximately one inch at 100 yards. The emitter is back here just sort of in front of where that... Uh, elevation knob is and that's going to actually emit the image onto the glass. Now that's sort of a pro and a con. The pro of it is that it's a very reliable system. All the electronics are back here so no issues with them getting damaged. They're fully protected here by this uh, 7075 T6 aluminum case that it's in. Now the downside of it is of course if you get mud in there it will uh, prohibit the image from being projected forward. Just something to keep in mind but that's also one of the good reasons to have sort of the opening here so you can flick it out with your finger if you need to. And even if uh, something's back there uh, stopping the, the projection of the dot onto the glass, you can still use your iron sights so long as you can see through the actual glass itself. So uh, a lot of things would have to go wrong in order for it to not work, but there is sort of redundant backup systems there, which I do like personally. Here in front of me, we have three different types of RMRs and basically uh, they function differently. Of course, they all are about the same size and will all fit on the same mounts. But uh, so this one right here, this is a self-adjusting RMR. So you can see these adjustment points here on the side. It uses a CR2032 battery as does this one here. So both use that battery, very common battery. You can get it just about anywhere. But this one, you actually have to adjust the brightness yourself. This one here has the fiber optic all the way around. And that's going to gather the light and project it onto the screen here giving you your dot. So uh, these two are sort of the more uh, common ones, I guess you'd say out there. The RM01 that we have here is a auto adjuster. So the uh, benefit of that, of course, is that it adjusts the brightness to the area that you're in. The downside of it is you can't change it. So it adjusts to whatever it senses. So it does have a battery underneath, just like this one against your 2032. Uh, one of the downsides of the optic of all RMRs that are battery powered anyway, is that in order to uh, change that battery, you have to take it off and you have to re-zero it. So just something to keep in mind that said the battery will last a long time. Um, Trigicon says that in a bright environment, the battery will last two years in a dark environment. So say if you left in your safe, uh, they rate it to five years. So two to five years of uh, constant on time, change it once a year, uh, say birthday or Christmas or something like that on a defensive gun, you should be just fine. I've had this one on for five months now. Again, it's going just fine. I don't see any signs of issues or anything like that. But just keep that in mind, you do have to uh, actually take it off to change the battery. So that could be a con depending on uh, the type of use you're looking at. 
So a few things that we didn't get into thus far in the video. Number one is going to be cost. So that's something we always care about, right? So this uh, Glock pistol, depending on where you get it, uh, at least as of the time in this video, is going to be anywhere from like 585 looking online upwards to like 685, 700. So in terms of Glock pistols, it's on the upper end of the price category. So a little bit expensive, but you do have some added features. It does come with three magazines, three 15 round mags, which is certainly nice. Um, of course, you have the Gen 4 texture and it's milled to accept all the different uh, little micro dots out there so that's certainly a good thing uh, the sites here the Trigicons again sent out by optics planet and uh, I'll just stop here and we'll put a code down on the bottom of your screen so you guys can see optics planet is always nice enough to give our viewers a discount code so if you guys go over there the links for these uh, both the RMR and these sites will be down below um, if you go over there use the code you'll get 5% off so as always we appreciate that from optics planet so the sites there I believe are in the 120 range again that's going to vary by day i'm sure they have sales and stuff like that and the rmr as of this video at least i looked on earlier was i believe 550 or 560 so uh the total package that you see here costs i think about 1300 dollars by the time we got done with it so it's pretty expensive right uh, you could get you know a nice 1911 for that or many other guns a bcm ar15 or something like that so is it worth it so, uh, I don't know. Glocks all have drawbacks like we talked about, some of the inconsistent finishes that we've seen. Um, some of, the, like I mentioned earlier, some of my other 10mm Glocks haven't been that accurate. Of course, this gun blew that out of the water. It had exceptional accuracy. I mean, I own, again, 1911s, uh, CZs, guns that are known for their accuracy that, that I haven't got the kind of accuracy that we did with this gun out of them. So, uh, this particular example has great accuracy. The 6-inch barrel, the long sight radius, of course, all great things and the ability to set the optics. 100% um, reliability thus far. Um, we've ran, of course, the two federal loads, the American Eagle and the Trophy Bonded. Um, I ran a ton of uh, full metal jacket um, uh, stuff for free munitions. I believe it's the 180 gram load that they offer. Uh, remanufactured, if I do remember correctly, I ran 100 rounds of the XTP through it. All in all, I think we got just under 800 rounds through it. Not a single malfunction at all. So the Glock reliability that we come to expect is there. So again, I think this gun is, is really well suited for, again, hunters. A lot of you live in states where there is pistol hunting season or times that you can only hunt with a pistol or game that you can only hunt with a pistol. So if that's you, uh, definitely this would be one to look at. The 10 millimeter, as you guys saw from the numbers earlier in the chronograph test, does awesome. Uh, it just has a lot of power coming out of a semi-automatic pistol. And uh, Glocks, of all the 10 millimeter pistols I've ever shot, have by far and away the softest recoil impulse. I don't know if that's because of the relatively wide back strap that we have here distributing the force, the actual action of the gun, whatever the case may be. The fact that it weighs 40 ounces loaded, that certainly helps. Um, but they are very soft shooting guns for 10 millimeters. So how does the recoil compare to something else? Like say I have a Glock 41, as many of you guys have seen, which is a 45 caliber version, similar uh, dimensions. So that gun, without question, has a little bit more of a push uh, recoil impulse, a little bit softer impulse, whereas this definitely has more of a punch. Uh, you feel it a little bit, particularly with those uh, trophy bonded rounds that you guys saw out there. Uh, that said, if you're a proficient shooter, uh, it shouldn't be hard at all to control. And uh, 10 millimeter really runs the gamut in terms of charges. You can get some of them that are loaded like uh, 40 Smith and Wesson, relatively weak rounds, and then the hot stuff like you guys saw earlier. So, um, would I recommend it for home defense? Uh, yes. Uh, that said, I would uh, ensure that if you're going to pick this up for a personal defense weapon against humans that are potentially shooting at you and stuff like that, that you understand that uh, the gun's going to have a little bit more recoil impulse, and hopefully you're an experienced shooter who can handle that. Um, otherwise, you know, 940, uh, 45 may be a better option for you. So, uh, but it certainly will get the job done. I would feel uh, very, very confident going into a pistol gunfight anyway. Of course, I'd always rather have a rifle, but with this gun. So. Good gun all the way around. It has the standard uh, Glock drawbacks, the sights that suck, like we talked about earlier, but we upgraded them here on this one. I like the interchangeable backstrap. I like the beaver tail. Um, 
I like Glocks. What can I say? They, they're not perfect like they say they are, but they do tend to be pretty good guns overall. Uh, if you guys have any questions about this video or anything else that we talked about, uh, you can always post down below in the comments section. You can also post over at my Facebook page as always, but I do appreciate you guys watching. If you're a new viewer, please go ahead and click that subscribe button to see more videos like this. Uh, generally speaking, you won't have guys with bandanas in them, but uh, that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. We'll see you in the next video.